Hello, my name is Archie Movie Girl, and today I have a bit of a different video for you. It um might be called a movie of the week, my favorite movie of the week. It's called A Marriage of Convenience. It it was originally a book by George Backoven. It was made in 1998, and it stars Jane Seymour and James Brolin as the characters in the story. And what happens is Chris, Chris Winslow is told at the beginning of the movie, she's an advertising executive, and she's told at the beginning of the movie while she's working, she gets a message on her beeper that she's to call the hospital, a 911 message on her beeper. And unbeknownst to her, her sister, Sherry, has just died in a car accident. And while that's tragic, what happens right before that is that she gives birth to a child and they name the child Kevin. Well, what happens in after that is that Kevin is very ill and nobody's really sure of who the father is. Chris does say things like, Oh, well, around this time, she was in love with some sort of Howard Hughes type character, which is the character that they refer to as Mason Whitney, a corporate shark that she was in love with for about six months, maybe. And both Chris and um, the other character, Mason, have things in common. They've never really been committed to anything long term except for their careers. But when Mason finds out that he has a son, he begins to take, to want to take control because he never got the letter that, that Sherry was supposed to send because she died, and Chris sends the letter instead, which leads to a minor custody battle. It kind of reminds me of Kramer and Kramer, or Irreconcilable Differences, if you remember those movies. It's kind of similar, except it's a movie of the week, so it was never released in theaters. Anyway, in the course of getting to know Kevin and getting to know all his things that he likes and things like that, they break out into a small custody battle. It only lasts for about maybe a couple of weeks. Because the attorney literally says he's the father. He had your adoption is permanent, but if you don't give him cu uh, joint custody, it may if you don't give him visitation rights, it may look bad on your part that you tried to hide the fact that he's the father of the child and you knew the whole the whole time, and it, it could be construed that way. So they. The judge decides, okay, come without your lawyers and we'll figure something out. I'll mediate this. So they come without their lawyers. Unfortunately, they come at a time when the judge has a contentious custody battle with a separate couple that doesn't love each other anymore and that are fighting over their kids. You know, the, the woman says, well, I thought you have them for Christmas and they came back one of them came back with a 103 fever and blah, 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 and the man says, damn it, they're my kids too. And it just turns into a whole thing before they even go into the office. But the main thing is that this is, this is at the end of the 90s. So generally, kids wanted a stable family, including a mom and a dad. Even though at this time there was some differences about what families would look like even that not so much like a modern family type thing was more accepted at that time because it was less and it was more traditional a, a mother and a father for a child what is considered a nuclear family so at this time Kevin wants a nuclear family where he has a mother and a father who get along so Kevin suggests that they get married and they, they hem and haw about why they can't get married. We don't even live in the same city. We can't agree on diddly squat. Why would we get married? 
and they kind of come to this conclusion that, well, it's what Kevin wants, and it would be better for everybody, and Kevin would grow up a healthier person if he had both mother and father. But there's some contention, like the fact that he wants him to go to a high-end prep school where he may not be interested in any of the things that go on. But because of run times, you don't really see a lot of what they go through. You see a little bit, but you don't see a lot of what, what really the contentious parts of the relationship could be. You see him hand her papers. And she does get served a court order, so you know that it is quite contentious at certain parts, but you don't get to see the full scope of what went on. She does say that Kevin had health problems because he was born early, so he did, he did have health problems, even though he was fully capable of walking and talking and doing all the normal things. Maybe his heart was bad, because I know, I know at the beginning of the film he had a heart problem. So, Mick and he was supposed to be adopted by a family, but they wanted a healthy child instead. So, there's all sorts of things that maybe because of runtime it was shortened down. But overall, it's a good movie. Nobody dies. There's a little bit of a sex scene, but it, it's a lot more wholesome than most movies are today with the amount of sex and violence that we see. You're not going to lie to me and tell me that there's no sex and violence in movies because we all know there is. So it's a lot healthier and I think it should be rated PG-13 if anything. Not rated R but you know it is what it is. But it's similar to the movies that I mentioned earlier. Kramer vs. Kramer and Irreconcilable Differences which stars um, oh my God. Drew Barrymore and Ryan O'Neill and Shelley Long, which is about a, a young girl who wants to divorce her parents because they can't agree on diddly squat. So, and you, you see their marriage, if you've seen the movie, you've seen the course of their marriage, the course of their meeting, and the contention that goes on in current times where they are now. And then you get Kramer versus Kramer, which is about, um, which stars Meryl Streep and, oh, that was his name? Okay, Dustin Hoffman. Meryl Streep and Des Dustin Hoffman, which I think is a 1977 movie. Correct me in the comments if you know the correct dates of that, because I don't, I can look them up later. But if you know them, tell me in the comments. But yeah, it's basically that, except it's, it's a lot shorter for runtime and it's a very common trope in romance for maybe a sister to fall in love with, uh, an alive sister to fall in love with a dead sister's former lover. I, I know it's kind of like really skeezy, but if you stop and think about it, who else was going to help raise Kevin? I mean, literally, Mason was interested because a lot of these people, when they have these kids, they're not really interested in raising them. They just want to throw money at them, which is initially what happens. But initially, they find, they come into their own and find common ground. And I really, really enjoy the movie. And unfortunately for you all, it's only available on Amazon. And I do have one pet peeve, though. If you're going to rent it, instead of renting it for like a day, like most rental services work, from the minute you push play, the rental starts. It's not like you have it for 24 hours or 72 hours or whatever it is. It's not like you have that, that, that open space. But you can buy it for $7 and be done with it, which is what I did. So that I could explore the movie and like be really interested in the, in the themes of the movie. But that's just me because I love romance novels. But unfortunately, the romance novel itself that it's based on is no longer available. I'll put Georgia Backoven's website in the description of this video. But um, the trailer that was on Georgia Backoven's website has been removed because 
due to copyright issues, it was removed from YouTube, but you can still find it on Amazon, like I said. And I'll put the description of the movie and everything down below so that you can read it and see it for yourself. And if you choose to buy it or rent it from Amazon, it's up to you. But I just really liked the movie and wanted to do a uh, um, movie of the week review. If you know of any other movies of the week that you think I should watch and that are still available, please let me know in the comments. And of course, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you in my very next video. Bye.